the highest inflation in 40 years, a recession and complete destruction of our economy, big tech censorship, rising crimes, open borders, woke culture, the war on fossil fuels. Could all of this be part of a secret plan to destroy America? According to best-selling author and former advisor to the CIA and the Pentagon, Jim Rickards, yes, and he has a shocking congressional document to prove it. Jim is a lawyer and economist who's worked at the highest levels of Wall Street and international finance for over 40 years. He helped Ronald Reagan negotiate the end of the Iranian crisis. He helped the U.S. government craft the petrodollar accord in the 1970s. He worked with members of the Federal Reserve to solve the long-term capital management banking crisis in the 1990s. And he's worked with senior military leaders at the Pentagon and the highest levels of the CIA to help prevent the next 9-11. Today, he's warning patriots across the country that we could be days away from the complete collapse of the American empire. After correctly predicting the Great Recession of 2008, Trump's 2016 election, and the COVID crisis of 2020, he believes we're entering the last phase of a well-orchestrated plan to destroy our republic. If he's right, most of our constitutional freedoms will be flipped off with a switch. Millions of Americans will fall into poverty and never be able to recover. Those who don't prepare could even be completely locked out of their life savings and bank account. For the first time ever, he's going public with the five steps you need to take to protect you and your family from what he believes will be the biggest crisis in our nation's history. Here's Jim Rickards with all the details. Warning, the following interview will be disturbing to some audiences. Reader discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Doug Hill, and I'm here to interview famous economist, best-selling author, and former advisor to the CIA and the Pentagon, Jim Rickards. Jim, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Now, Jim, I want to start with this recent poll that shows that nearly three in four Americans believe the country is headed in the wrong direction. Things already seem pretty bleak, and from what I understand, you believe it's about to get a whole lot worse. And you're here today to warn all Americans and help them prepare for the final days of our republic. Is that right? That's right, Doug. And I have the smoking gun right here in my hand. This document is coming straight from Congress, and it explains exactly everything that's happening to our nation. It explains why America is no longer the country you and I grew up in. I mean, do we even recognize America anymore? No. To be honest, I don't. Most Americans feel there's something wrong, but very few truly understand what's happening. And that's why I'm here today. Everything that's wrong with America today can be explained by this document. The runaway inflation that's waterboarding the middle class. Widespread corruption we normally only see in third world banana republics. The extreme level of political division in our country. The open border, rising crime rates, the woke culture, big tech censorship, our weakened military. And basically, everything that makes you think that America has gone off the rails. That can all be traced back to this document because it details an evil plan to destroy America from within. What do you mean by a plan? All this stuff you just mentioned, it's not by accident? It's not a result of incompetence? No, think about it. In the last couple of years, not a single good thing has happened to America. Nobody can be that incompetent. I believe this is all part of a plan that has been decades in the making a plan to weaken America and replace our free society with an authoritarian state. And it's now finally reaching its final stage, which will be the most violent and chaotic. Nobody ever thought this could happen in America, but it has. Under the disguise of various names and organizations, the dangerous idea behind this document has infiltrated every major institution in America. I'm talking about Wall Street, universities and schools, the medical establishment, corporations, popular entertainment, our military, Congress, our judicial system, the Department of Justice and the FBI, and the highest ranks of our own government, including the White House. So all of these institutions are involved in this plan? I believe they're all playing a role, yes. I know this sounds alarmist, but I'm not the only one who's connected the dots. New York Times bestselling author and constitutional lawyer Mark Levin says, this plan has now reached its pinnacle. It's a war on your lifestyle, a war on your income, a war on your private property, a war on capitalism. We won't believe that it's taking place, but it is. It's here and now, and it's in our face. Kevin Freeman, who's considered one of the world's leading experts on economic warfare, says, the crises now facing America are happening according to plan. 
Decades in the making, it's a plan to take down the greatest obstacle to totalitarianism the world has ever known, the United States. And the Federalist warns, if we don't stop it, this plan will annihilate the American way of life. Wow, that's terrifying. So how do we stop this plan? Unfortunately, there's no way to stop it. This is a terminal illness that has spread throughout our entire body. It's too late now. But Jim, if it's too late and there's no way to reverse the situation, are you saying we're all doomed? Our republic is doomed. But there's still time for us to prepare for the coming chaos. Look, Doug, I love our country and I truly hope I'm wrong about everything I'm going to tell you today. But as a former advisor to the CIA and Pentagon, I simply can't bury my head in the sand and ignore all the facts. So today I'm going to show you all the proof I've gathered, including this congressional document. Then you can make up your own mind. Now, before I move on, I need to make something very clear. This is not a political message. I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. You need to prepare now because we're entering the last phase of their plan, where we'll see the complete deconstruction of the American way of life from top to bottom. The inflation we've seen so far is nothing compared to what's coming. The stock market already started to crash, but we're nowhere near the bottom. In the coming months, I believe we'll see the worst crash of our lifetime. By the time all is said and done, stocks could be down 80% or even 90%. So you're talking about um, complete market collapse. Yes. Famous investor Michael Barry, who correctly predicted the 2008 housing meltdown, said this could be worse than 2008. And it gets much worse. Because as I'll explain here today, I believe once they start implementing the last phase of their plan, you might lose access to your bank account, your credit card, your life savings, and your retirement benefits, including Social Security, all just because of your political views. You mean I'll be unable to take cash from my own bank account? That's exactly what I mean. You see, this isn't just about money and your financial future. This is about your God-given rights and your freedom. And that's what really scares me. Soon you could lose some of your most sacred constitutional rights, like the freedom of speech and freedom to bear arms. You could lose access to health care. You could lose access to the internet. Your kids and grandkids could lose access to schools. And you could lose your freedom to travel and go to certain restaurants. Come on, Jim. With all due respect, this sounds a bit crazy. There's no way this can happen in America. I know this sounds crazy, but let me ask you this, Doug. Just a few years ago, if I had told you the White House would publicly declare that 75 million Americans are, and I quote, an extreme threat to our democracy, to our freedom, to our rights, wouldn't you have called me crazy? Yes, I guess I would. I don't think any of us could have predicted that, though. What if I told you that the FBI would tell federal law enforcement that the use of patriotic American symbols is evidence of domestic terrorism? I bet you'd have called me crazy, right? Right. Just a few years ago, if I had told you that instead of focusing more on training for war, our military would be training on how to be more inclusive and learn new gender pronouns, wouldn't you have called me crazy? Yes, I guess I would. Doug, if I had told you that academics at the highest levels of our education system would not be able to define what a woman is, you'd have called me crazy too. If I had told you that our government would help create the highest inflation in 40 years and then would spend even more money as a solution, you'd call me crazy. And if I had told you that young school children would be separated in public schools because of their race and that we would call that progress instead of segregation, you'd have called me crazy too. Because that's exactly what's happening in America today. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how every single one of those things is connected to this document. And I'll explain why I believe this is all part of this decades-long plan to destroy our republic. Hold on, Jim. Those things you just mentioned, that's some of the stuff that makes me think we've all lost our minds. Clearly, something has gone terribly wrong with our country. And you're saying this congressional document explains all of it? Yes. None of those things is happening by accident. I'm going to explain everything today. I'm going to name names and expose the global lease plan to destroy our nation from within, all in the name of wealth and complete power. More importantly, I'm going to show you the five steps I recommend everyday folks take right now. These are the same steps I've taken to protect myself and my family from the coming chaos. I'll even tell you where I already invested $1 million of my own money and share one single move that you can make to opt out of their evil plan. Okay, I can't wait to hear the details, Jim, because I know you're not just some crazy conspiracy theorist. You're a lawyer, an economist who's worked at the highest levels of Wall Street and international finance for over 40 years. Thanks to your expertise, you've been advising the U.S. government on matters of national security for many decades now. 
You helped negotiate the end of the Iranian hostage crisis for the Reagan administration. You helped the Nixon administration craft the petrodollar accord, which helped establish the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. In the late 1990s, I know you worked side by side with members of the Federal Reserve to save America from a $1.3 trillion banking crisis involving the hedge fund long-term capital management. After 9-11, you started working with senior military leaders at the Pentagon and the highest ranks of the CIA. And you helped them create a computer system to predict the next 9-11 by analyzing unusual trading activity in airline stocks. You've given advice to members of President Trump's cabinet. You've been inside the West Wing of the White House, the U.S. Treasury, and the boardroom at our central bank, the Federal Reserve. We're looking at pictures of you with former Fed Chief Ben Bernanke and former Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner. Jim, with this kind of resume and these kinds of connections, it's kind of scary that someone like you, someone with your credibility, is going public with such a drastic warning. Aren't you afraid of getting censored for this message? Doug, no, I'm not. I've been around long enough to know that the truth is the most important thing. So I'm not the least bit worried about being censored. And I truly love my country. I have grandkids, and I'm really worried about the country we're going to leave them. So after I uncovered this document and connected all the dots, I couldn't stay silent. I feel like it's my duty to warn my fellow Americans about what's coming. And look, I know that this idea that we're on the verge of losing our republic is hard to believe, but I built my career predicting events that most people thought were unthinkable. Yeah, I know you predicted the 2008 global financial crisis, right? Right, but when I predicted that collapse, do you think anyone believed me? No, they didn't. In the summer of 2008, I wrote this letter to top advisors in the presidential campaign saying, we can expect another panic spike in October 2008. This financial crisis is not over. And nobody believed you. Unfortunately, everyone in Washington thought such a systemic collapse was impossible. But three weeks later, Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. Panic took over. Markets crashed around the world, ruining the retirements of millions. An estimated $2 trillion disappeared almost overnight from Americans' 401ks and IRAs. 8.7 million people lost their jobs, and nearly 10 million lost their homes in the United States alone. Yeah, I know that once Congress realized you were right, they even invited you to testify in the Senate about the state of the economy. And Jim, that wasn't even your most controversial prediction. In 2016, you made another prediction that was far more controversial, right? Right. Surveys were giving Hillary Clinton more than a 99% chance of winning right up until election night. But you went on live TV and made a prediction that left the anchor speechless. We actually have a short clip of that. Let's watch. US election mm -hmm. first. Who do you think will win? Well, here's the point. I, a personal view, or just a personal opinion, is that Trump will probably win. But the, the por important wow. message for investors is that you don't have to agree with that. The, the important thing is Trump could win. Yeah. Now, you won't hear that anywhere. U.S. media, pundits, elites, the, the, it's like Hillary's got it in the bag. Some betting uh, services are already paying off Hillary bets. Everything seems to be pointing to a Clinton victory, apart from gold. So again, the markets seem to be betting one way, still making hedges. Well, the most important thing you said, Francine, is everything seems to be pointing to a Clinton victory. If you look at the polls, the pundits, the betting odds, and the financial markets, this election was over a couple of weeks ago. I expect a, a Trump victory in a very close race. I think we'll be up late. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is you have- So you don't believe the polls? Uh, I think or the, the turnout will be greater? Uh, both. The, the polls have uh, oversampled Democrats, and then among the Democrats, what they don't tell you, if you oversample African Americans within the Democratic sample, that skews it, because there are a certain number of white Democrats who will vote for Trump. They're not represented. And CNN projects Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida. Iowa? CNN projects Donald Trump will win the state of Iowa with its six electoral votes. Ohio? Will take Ohio. Florida? Iowa, Ohio, Nevada, Georgia. CNN now projects that Donald Trump will carry the state of Georgia. So you correctly predicted that Trump would win. More recently, you made another controversial prediction about the pandemic. Back in January 2020, way before the market started to panic, you sent this note, Contagion, to a small group of readers warning them this would get much worse and saying that the crisis that started in China could quickly spread and create a global crisis, which is exactly what happened. So I think I'd have to agree with you when you said you've made a career of making controversial predictions. That's right. In each of those predictions, most people didn't believe me. They thought I was crazy. 
And yet the events unfolded exactly like you predicted. They did. And the problem is, by the time people realized I was right, it was already too late to prepare. So I'm going to ask everyone watching this, please don't make that mistake today, because the stakes here couldn't be any higher. As I describe what's happening to America, you'll think this is some kind of conspiracy theory. But as I like to say, the real world is far scarier than any conspiracy theory. So I'm going to show you all the proof I've gathered, including this congressional document. Then you can decide for yourself if I'm just blowing smoke. As for me, I already started to prepare because I believe we're on the verge of a new American revolution. A new American revolution? What do you mean? Well, as you know, in 1776, we fought a revolution here in America. Until that year, old world Europe believed that a small group of enlightened elites should decide what's best for society. Americans didn't agree with that. Instead, we had a revolutionary idea that citizens would engage in self-governance where everyone's voices would count equally. It was that experiment that created the greatest nation the world has ever seen. Unfortunately, the plan described by this document is driving us back to that old model where a small group of elites get to decide how you live your life. So what exactly is this plan you're talking about? You see, global elites have been planning a Marxist takeover of America for decades now, all in the name of money and power. As you know, Marxism is the idea that we must abolish capitalism and redistribute wealth in order to achieve a perfect and equal society. And the only way to do that is by giving complete power to the state. And this plan is coming from Congress? Well, here's what happened. In 1958, the book The Naked Communists listed 45 goals of the communist agenda. If they want to take over America, all they had to do was implement those 45 steps. This was so important that it was even recorded in Congress. So what I'm holding in my hand is their plan with 45 goals that's now part of the congressional record. You're seeing the official document on your screen. Global elites have been working on these goals for the last few decades. I recently went through the entire list and has sent a shiver down my spine because most of the goals have already been accomplished. I'm talking about things like goal number 15, capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. Goal number 29, discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs. Goal 30, discredit the American founding fathers. Doug, do any of these sound familiar to you? Wow, that's really scary. Jim, that's exactly what's happening in America today. When I was growing up, they used to teach us about the greatness of our Constitution and the brilliance of our founding fathers, but we don't hear that anymore. In fact, I've come across multiple articles saying that we should rewrite the Constitution or that our founding fathers were just a bunch of old, out-of-touch men. So, if most of their goals have already been accomplished, are you saying that Marxism has taken over America? That's exactly what I'm saying. It has spread through America like a contagious virus. And again, I'm not the only one who's noticed. Listen to what the former CEO of Whole Foods said recently. Marxists are marching through the institutions. They're taking over education. It looks like they've taken over a lot of corporations. It looks like they've taken over the military, and it's just continuing. And I feel like with the way freedom of speech is today, the movement on gun control, a lot of the liberties that I've taken for granted most of my life, I think, are under threat. And that's why I put together a complete protection plan I call How to Opt Out of American Marxism. Everyone watching this will have a chance to claim this plan for free. I'm sure we'll get into the details later, but this plan has five steps you need to take to prepare for the end of the republic. Yeah, I can't wait to hear the details of this plan, but before we get to that, let me ask you this. What else is listed in this congressional document? Well, let me ask you this. Do you feel like we're more divided than ever before? Absolutely, I've never seen this level of division before. I believe that's not an accident. In order to implement their plan for total control and power, the Marxists first need to divide us. They want us to forget that we're all Americans. They want us to forget our national identity and turn on each other. They want us to hate our neighbors. Just listen to what President Biden said in what many consider to be the most divisive speech ever given by a president. He called all the millions of Americans who didn't vote for him a threat to this country. Are you saying President Biden is a Marxist? I'm saying he's been captured by Marxist ideology, yes. He has called half of Americans fascists. And that's another Marxist trick. Take a look at this official Communist Party directive from 1943. It says, when certain obstructions become too irritating, label them as fascists to discredit them. In the public mind, constantly associate those who oppose Marxism with those names which already have a bad smell. The association will, after enough repetition, 
become fact in the public mind. That's mind blowing that our own president is following directives from the Communist Party. So they're doing this on purpose to divide us. They are. You see, Marxists understand that humans need to feel like they're part of a group. So they exploit that to divide us into groups. That's exactly why we've seen the rise of identity politics in recent years. At first, Marxists used class warfare to divide us with the idea that capitalists exploit workers. But that idea of class warfare was pretty hard to hold in America because in our society, anyone could rise to the top. I mean, you can find infinite stories of rags to riches in America, right? Right, yeah. And that's why class warfare was not enough to completely destroy our society like the Marxists envisioned. So they found new ways to divide us into groups of oppressor and oppressed. Just look at the recent rise of Marxist ideas like critical race theory. That's the idea that America is systematically racist, and for that reason, it must be toppled. So they came up with this race theory to divide us? I believe they did. And I think it's in direct contradiction to Martin Luther King Jr.'s teachings. Why should we be dividing our country by skin color to figure out if you're the oppressor or the oppressed? It's a divisive plan, and it's working to divide our country. But if you criticize them, you'll be immediately labeled or canceled. That obviously creates a lot of hate and division. No wonder recent polls show that racial relations in the U.S. are at their lowest point in more than 20 years. It looks like their plan to divide us is working. It's definitely working, and it's not just race. I believe they're also using gender to divide us. In recent years, the idea that men and women are artificial categories has gone mainstream. According to this new theory, human identity is not determined by biology. It's determined by your feelings. So if you're a biological male who identifies as a woman, it means you're a woman. That's how you end up with college professors and even doctors saying ridiculous things like men can get pregnant. And that's how you end up with members of the Biden administration overreaching their civic duty and recommending puberty blockers and hormone therapy to families and kids. Yeah, I've seen some of that stuff and it really is disturbing, but how is all of this related to the end of our republic? Because in order to destroy a republic, first you need to destroy the nuclear family, and that's clearly well underway. None of this gender stuff is rooted in science. It's rooted in Marxist ideology designed to tear apart the nuclear family. In fact, take a look at Marxist goal number 40, discredit the family as an institution. It's right there on their list. Wow, so this is all part of the plan. Karl Marx himself called for the abolition of the family in the Communist Manifesto of 1848. That's why they're now targeting the most innocent among us, children. As past president of the American College of Pediatricians, Dr. Michelle Critella says, they're pushing children to impersonate the opposite sex, sending many of them down the path of puberty blockers, sterilization, the removal of healthy body parts, and untold psychological damage. We're talking about serious, irreversible, life-altering decisions. Yeah, that's completely ridiculous because you can't even get a tattoo if you're under 18. Exactly. You can't get a tattoo, but they recommend life-altering hormone therapies and gender-affirming surgeries. Why would they do that? Because Marxists believe the state should have complete power over children, not parents. And it's starting to get really scary. Some parents who refuse these radical theories are losing custody of their children right here in America. It's unbelievable. That really sounds like a great way of tearing apart the nuclear family. And none of this gender and racial nonsense is going to stop. In fact, it's only getting worse because our schools are no longer educating students. They're brainwashing them in the ways of Marxist thought and doctrines. That, by the way, is another Marxist goal. Doug, can you please read what goal number 17 says? Sure. It says, get control of the schools, Use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum, get control of teachers' unions, put the party line in textbooks. In other words, control the schools, the curriculum, the teachers, and the classroom, and eventually you'll control the hearts and minds of the population. Isn't that exactly what's happening in America today? That sounds about right. Aside from teaching our kids that they can change their gender if they want to, they're also teaching our kids that America is a racist nation. While our competitors like China are teaching their kids math, reading, and science, we're teaching our kids to hate our country. No wonder a recent poll found that a third of U.S. adults now embrace Marxist views. Wow, so millions of Americans have already been brainwashed? It looks like all this indoctrination is really paying off for them. It really is. Because once those kids leave college, they go on to work as executives at large corporations. And that's how you end up with Disney executives openly promoting sexual content to kids. That's how you end up with Coke teaching their employees to be less white. 
And that's how you end up with CEOs of big tech companies defending censorship. Once these kids leave college, they go on to work as journalists. But instead of reporting facts, they become activists who are more interested in propaganda than reporting the truth. These kids also go on to work at the highest levels of our judicial system. That's how you end up with district attorneys who refuse to punish criminals, all in the name of social justice, and a Supreme Court justice who publicly said she could not define what a woman is. Doug, can you see how all these Marxist ideas are tearing society apart? Yes, I just never thought of it this way. Jim, nobody has ever connected the dots like this for me, but now that you're showing that all of these things have been written down as a plan, this all makes complete sense. So I'm really glad you're spending some time with us today. I know that in just a moment, you're going to discuss all the five steps we can take today to opt out of American Marxism. And I can't wait to hear about the last phase of their plan. But before we get to that, let me ask you this. How come nobody's talking about this? I mean, it really seems like America is going to hell in a handbasket. And how come we don't see anyone discussing this in the news? Because that's also part of their plan. Take a look at goal number 20. It says, infiltrate the press, get control of book review assignments, editorial writings, and policy-making positions. For Marxism to take hold in society, they must first control the media. Well, I can tell you they've definitely accomplished that goal already. They have. I believe they've captured every single major mainstream media, just based on all the biased coverage I see. I believe they've captured major newspapers like the New York Times and the Washington Post, major TV networks like ABC, NBC, MSNBC, and even NPR and PBS, which are both funded with your taxpayer money. Our media are completely corrupt. Today, they simply parrot whatever the elites want us to believe with total disregard for the truth. But Americans are not as dumb as they think we are. We know they're lying to us most of the time, which is why trust in the mainstream media is now at an all-time low. Yeah, after making up so many lies, I don't think anyone believes the media anymore. And that's why Marxists are moving on to the next stage of their plan. Once propaganda no longer works, they use force to destroy any opposing ideas. So you believe they're going to use force? They're already doing it. Anything that goes against their narrative is labeled as misinformation, even if it's verifiably true and backed up by data and science. They use that as a pretext to deplatform, ban, and censor you. That's why I don't know for how long this video will remain online. I mean, some people have been banned from social media for simply stating the scientific fact that men cannot get pregnant. So when you say social media, does that mean big tech is also involved in this plan? Absolutely. And by the way, that's another one of their listed goals. Take a look. Goal number 37 says, infiltrate and gain control of big business. I believe Marxists have captured companies like Google and Facebook. That's why countless Americans have been banned on social media because of their political views. For example, a member of the World Economic Forum, which is one of the organizations leading this Marxist movement, recently admitted they partnered with Google to censor their critics. So when you search for things in Google, anything that goes up against their narrative might not show up until further down in the search. That's crazy, but these social media companies are private companies. Shouldn't they be able to do whatever they want? Right, but here's the problem. Documents from a recent lawsuit reveal that more than 50 officials in President Biden's administration have pressured big tech companies to crack down on alleged misinformation. Wow, so our own government is colluding with these companies to censor citizens? It seems that way. Of course, it seems to me the government calls misinformation anything that goes against their narrative and their Marxist plan. I find that really troubling because many Americans don't know what's true and what's propaganda. And if they're manipulating the flow of information like that, it could have a real impact on elections. Absolutely. We now know that the FBI worked with Facebook to suppress the infamous Hunter Biden's laptop story before the last presidential election. Facebook's own CEO admitted that. According to sources within the Department of Justice, Facebook has been spying on the private messages and data of American users. So they've been spying on us? Yes, and they're reporting private messages to the FBI if they express anti-government or anti-authority sentiments like questioning the 2020 election. And this is all setting the stage for the next phase of their plan. That's what really keeps me up at night because they're going to use every single power at their disposal. And that includes using the Department of Justice and law enforcement agencies like the FBI to go after their political opponents. Are you talking about the raid on President Trump's house? Well, that's part of it, but that's not the full story. 
It's clear to me that the Marxists who are pulling the strings have now created a two-tier judicial system in America where the law is only applied if it hurts their political opponents. For example, anyone with two brain cells to rub together knows there's evidence the president's son and possibly the president himself have been involved in a massive corruption scandal. I'm not saying anyone's guilty, I'm just saying there's more than enough evidence for an investigation. But the FBI refuses to investigate any of that. Instead, they're busy targeting political opponents. But Jim, aren't everyday folks like you and me safe from this kind of political persecution? Not anymore. The FBI is even targeting parents at school board meetings. When parents start to speak out against the teaching of critical race theory in classrooms and to protest mask mandates, the FBI and DOJ started investigating threats of violence. As part of their plan, the government just passed a new law that I believe will help them come after you and me. What do you mean? What law? I'm talking about federal law number 117-169. Buried on page 37 of this new law, they added what could be the biggest expansion of the police state in American history. They provided an additional $80 billion in funding to the IRS, increasing the agency's budget by more than 600%. That would make the IRS larger than the Pentagon, State Department, FBI, and Border Patrol combined. Yeah, I saw on the news that they're adding as many as 87,000 new IRS agents, but they're saying this is for the IRS to go after the rich who are not paying their taxes. That's nonsense. Just listen to what former Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard said. The wealthy are only one to 2% of all taxpayers. So why in the world do they need $80 billion and 87,000 new hires in order to go after one to 2% of taxpayers? Their math absolutely does not add up, which should be frightening and concerning because this means they're coming after us. They're coming after entrepreneurs. They're coming after small business owners. They're coming after our middle-class, hardworking Americans. Doug, guess what percentage of all IRS audits last year were for those who earned less than $75,000? I don't know, 5%? 51%. Wow, so last year most IRS audits already targeted the middle class? Right, and that's not going to change. According to a recent analysis, Americans who are making less than $75,000 will be subject to 710,863 additional IRS audits. And here's what's really scary. They already started hiring new agents. Take a look at this job post that's coming straight from their website. Look at the requirements for the job. One of them says you must carry a firearm and be willing to use deadly force. While they tell you that guns are dangerous and you shouldn't have any, and while the president is publicly calling for a weapons ban, they're arming the IRS to the teeth. The IRS already has an arsenal of 4,600 firearms and 5 million rounds of ammunition. And they just bought nearly $700,000 more in ammunition. Jim, that's crazy. I had no idea they had an arsenal. But Jim, so, I pay my taxes, so why should I be worried about IRS audits? Well, let me ask you this. The tax code is so complex, even the best accountants don't fully understand all the rules and loopholes. Are you 100% sure you or your accountant follows all the rules in 75,000 pages of regulations? Yeah, when you put it like that, it's hard to know for sure if you're following all the rules. Not to mention that the IRS has a history of targeting political opponents. A few years ago, they even apologized for targeting groups with Tea Party or Patriot in their names. With Marxism taking control of America and the White House calling half of Americans domestic terrorists, are you confident they're not going to abuse their power again? Okay, I see your point. So that's what you mean by a two-tier justice system. The elites are using the power of the state to go after their political opponents. Right. At the same time, they're choosing not to enforce any laws against actual criminals. For example, just look at what's going on at our border. The drug cartels and smugglers are basically running our border. It's estimated that almost 5 million illegal immigrants have entered our country in the last 18 months. So far this year, border agents already apprehended 78 known terrorists. How many terrorists actually made it inside the country? Nobody knows. Things are so crazy that Venezuela is now actually emptying their prisons and sending their criminals across our border. Wow, that's absolutely insane. Doug, in July alone, we seized 2,071 pounds of the lethal drug fentanyl, enough to kill every single American. Of course, some of those drugs are making it into the country. As a result, fentanyl overdoses are now the number one cause of death among U.S. adults ages 18 to 45. More than COVID, more than car accidents, more than cancer, 
more than suicide. Unbelievable. So you think that's all part of their plan to destabilize society? Yes. In order to achieve their utopia, they must first burn down the house. And there's no better way to burn down the house than by creating a society where laws don't apply anymore. Look at the crime rate. Thanks in part to the defund the police movement, which is a movement organized by a self-proclaimed trained Marxist, violent crime has skyrocketed across America. In many major cities, it's no longer safe to walk around. You might get robbed or even killed in broad daylight. Yeah, the other day I saw news that a woman in California was brutally murdered by a man right outside her house in broad daylight. It's crazy that this is happening right here in America. Yes, that's happening because left-wing billionaire George Soros has installed Marxist district attorneys across the country. Instead of enforcing the law, they treat criminals as victims and refuse to prosecute them all in the name of social justice. In some cities, mobs are doing whatever they want because they know there will be no consequences. And Doug, this is only the beginning. We're about to enter the last phase of their plan, which I believe will mark the end of our republic. So things will get even more chaotic. Hold on, Jim. I know you're going to reveal all the five steps of your protection plan called How to Opt Out of American Marxism. And you're going to tell us how everyone can claim that today. But let me catch my breath here for a moment. So, so far you've mentioned that we're losing freedom of speech with all the censorship that's going on. Our kids are being brainwashed in schools. They're using race and gender to divide us. Law enforcement is being used to go after political opponents instead of going after criminals. How can it possibly get any worse? Well, if my prediction is correct, in the final phase of their plan, they're going to drive as many Americans as possible into poverty to make them dependent on the system. And there's no better way of impoverishing a country than attacking its cheap source of energy. I believe that's why Biden declared war on fossil fuels and why we're seeing all this push for green energy going mainstream. Yeah, during his campaign, Biden promised he would end fossil fuels. It seems like he's keeping that promise. So all these green energy policies we're seeing are also part of the plan? Absolutely. Look, Doug, I'm all for protecting our environment. In fact, I own the largest non-commercial solar farm in New England. But the reality is that solar and wind energy are just not enough to provide all the energy we need. That's just a fact. Tesla CEO Elon Musk understands that. Listen to what he said recently. Realistically, I think we need to use oil and gas in the short term because otherwise civilization will crumble. Yeah, it's interesting that this is coming from the man who sells more electric cars than anyone else. Yes, he's literally saying that our current green energy policy is suicide. But it's a great way to weaken our economy and set the stage for the last phase of their plan. In fact, if you want to have a glimpse at America's future, you just need to look at what's happening in Europe. Marxists took over their energy policy a long time ago, so their plan is well advanced in Europe. And it's not a pretty picture. The president of France recently warned his citizens. Listen to what he said. We are currently living through a great upheaval. We are living the end of an era of abundance. By the way, this is a major Marxist philosophy. Soviet defector and former KGB operative Yuri Bezmenov once said that in order for Marxism to take hold, society must be made to be satisfied with less. So here we have the French president declaring the end of abundance and that you should just expect much less from now on. In Spain, they banned air conditioning below 80 degrees during its record-setting summer heat wave because they don't have enough energy. In Switzerland, if you overheat your home, you could face three years in jail. They'll literally arrest you if you set your thermostat above 66 degrees during winter. In the UK, thousands of restaurants and pubs are preparing to close, and 60% of manufacturers are at risk of going bankrupt, all because they're unable to pay the soaring energy bills. Germany's electricity prices are up more than 1,000% since last year. Wow, that sounds like a complete disaster. Europe's going back to the dark ages because of their green energy policies. And you think that's what's going to happen here in America? It's already started. Here in the States, these green energy policies are already impoverishing us through inflation. What do you mean? How is the green energy policy connected to inflation? Well, the attack on the fossil fuel industry is a big reason why the price of oil has skyrocketed. And when the price of oil goes up, everything becomes more expensive. If you have to transport anything, you have to pay more. For example, in order to make fertilizer, we use natural gas. The price of natural gas has more than doubled this year, reaching the highest price in the last 14 years. As a result, we're seeing a huge spike in the cost of fertilizer. It's up 300% since 2021. And that's a big reason why the price of food is going crazy. Yeah, every time I go to the grocery store, I can't believe the prices. It's ridiculous. 
So are you saying inflation is also part of their plan to create chaos? Correct. Just look at what's happening to our economy. With inflation getting out of control, the Federal Reserve is now desperately raising interest rates to try to control inflation. They have no choice now. If they really want to control inflation, they'll have to trigger an economic depression and massive stock market crash. All the market volatility that we've seen so far is really nothing compared to what's coming. Jim, I'm sure that a lot of our viewers are struggling with the stock market. What do you recommend we do? Well, I recommend everyone use an investment strategy I call retirement insurance. And I'll explain what that is in just a moment. But first, let me tell you what I believe is going to happen in the last phase of their plan. You see, the stock market isn't the biggest of my worries. I believe they're planning something far more sinister that will completely transform America. And they're about to pull the trigger. So what exactly is going to happen in this last phase? I believe the elites will finally get complete control by implementing our own social credit score system, just like they're implementing in communist China. A social credit score, I heard about that. Can you explain how that works? A social credit score is like a credit score, but instead of being based on financial history, the social credit is based on how much you're willing to comply with the communist government. The Chinese Communist Party rigorously monitors speech and behavior. Those who conform to the party line get a good score. The dissenters get punished with a low score. So what happens if you get a low score? Well, the consequences can be much more severe than a credit ding. If you have a low social credit score, you could lose your job, your house, you could lose access to your bank account, and even freedom to travel. For example, you could be blacklisted, and if you tried to buy a plane or train ticket, you'll be denied. Your kids could also be denied access to the best schools and universities. Wow, and all this is already being rolled out in China? How come we don't hear much about it? Because much like what's already happening here in America, the Chinese media are completely controlled by the state. So of course, nobody talks about it, it's censored. But during the pandemic, millions of Chinese were lining up to take their mandatory daily PCR test to maintain their social credit score. Fail to take the test and you can't go to work or even walk around. Doug, think about what happened here with vaccine and mask mandates. Do you think the elites and career bureaucrats like Dr. Fauci would like to have that kind of power? Absolutely, I think they would love to have that kind of power. But Jim, I have to be honest, it's hard to believe something like that could ever happen in America. Well, I understand why you're skeptical, but the elites are already using the private sector to put their social credit score plan in motion. You see, the Chinese social credit system didn't begin in government, it began in the commercial sector. The same thing is happening right now here in the United States. For example, the tech firm Alibaba is developing an individual carbon footprint tracker. This program would collect data on individuals to track how much they're contributing to global warming. So what exactly would they track? They track where you're traveling, how much you're traveling, what you're eating, and what you're consuming. A tech startup called Daconomy has already partnered with MasterCard to develop a credit card that can track the carbon footprint of all your purchases, including food and travel. And it cuts off your spending when you hit a certain personal emissions limit. More recently, a credit card industry group has also approved a plan to track sales of guns and ammo with a new merchant code. Or look at what FICO is doing. FICO? You mean the consumer credit rating agency that assigns FICO scores? Yes. Their score basically determines your ability to get a mortgage, car loan, bank loan, or credit card. Well, they're planning to include energy ratings in their mortgage decisions. So if they think I'm contributing to global warming, they might not give me a mortgage? That's exactly right. That's why Justin Haskins, director at the free market think tank, Heartland Institute said, you're going to see financial institutions start to use a personalized social credit score of some kind to make decisions about things like your access to loans, your interest rate, or whether you're eligible for insurance coverage. All the signs are pointing to that happening very soon. By the way, this already happened in Canada recently during the trucker protests. Yeah, they were protesting against the vaccine mandates, right? Right. So Canadian banks froze their personal accounts and the accounts of their crowdfunding donors, instantly cutting them off from their own money, savings and income. Imagine if that happened to you. You want to get money from an ATM, but sorry, you can't. You want to take money out from your retirement account to pay the bills? Sorry, you can't. If you think that can't happen in the U.S., just listen to what the founding chief operating officer of PayPal said recently. Under new management, PayPal is working with partisan left-wing groups to define lists of individuals and groups who they deem to have extremist or unacceptable views, and they're denied access to PayPal accounts. And there are other financial institutions who are following suit. 
the collective effect of which is to shut people out of the financial system. Unbelievable. I'm speechless. They're, they're planning to shut us out of the financial system. If this is coming from a former PayPal executive, that means this isn't some crazy conspiracy theory. I told you, reality is far scarier than any conspiracy theory. It is. It's really scary. I mean, the elites are already saying out in the open that anyone who disagrees with their politics is an extremist. They're even calling us domestic terrorists. And just to think they're already working with financial institutions is terrifying. And it's going to get much worse because soon the government will get involved. And that will primarily happen with a digital dollar. All right, a digital dollar. What do you mean? Well, they're starting to implement these social credit scores with credit cards, but you still have the ability to use cash. Mm -hmm. So for them to have total control, they need to eliminate cash. And that's where a digital dollar comes in. That's the last phase of their plan. Unlike the current dollar, a central bank digital currency would not exist in physical form. You wouldn't be able to go to a bank or ATM and withdraw it. So it's like Bitcoin? It's a digital currency, but it's very different from Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies operate on blockchain technology, which is decentralized by design. No group or individual can truly control cryptocurrencies once they're launched. Digital dollars, on the other hand, would be traceable and programmable. The elites would have the ability to create more digital dollars whenever they see fit. And depending on how they set up the currency, these digital dollars could come with various rules and restrictions built into their design. What kind of rules and restrictions? For example, the elites have already decided gas-powered cars are bad for the environment, and they're even planning a complete ban. So they could make your digital dollars stop working at the gas pump once you've purchased a certain amount of gasoline in a week. Or they could ban it outright, so you wouldn't be able to put gas in your car. Wow, so you're talking about the elites having complete control of how we spend our money? That's exactly right. They could decide what kind of car you're allowed to drive what kind of food you're allowed to eat, what kind of books you're allowed to read, what kind of movies you're allowed to watch, and so on. By tracking how you spend your money, they could also take away many of your freedoms. Imagine the following scenario. You buy a book that criticizes the government or the elite, or you donate money to the opposing political party. They'll be able to track that with the digital dollar. So now they have proof that you're an extremist or domestic terrorist. They could use that to send the FBI to your door to investigate you further or just intimidate you. Wow, that's terrifying. And when do you think they're going to start implementing the digital dollar? It's already happening. Of course, the corrupt media aren't covering the story. But in January 2022, our central bank released a paper saying, and I quote, the Federal Reserve is considering how a digital dollar might fit into the U.S. money and payments landscape. The introduction of a digital dollar would represent a highly significant innovation in American money. Take a look at this headline. The Federal Reserve is already working with MIT to work out the technological kinks, and I believe they're about to flip the switch. So they already have the technology to actually enforce this? They're developing it as we speak, and that's not just me saying it. Listen to what the head of the Bank for International Settlements said. They're basically the central bank of central banks. He said, in cash, we don't know who is using a dollar bill today. A key difference with the digital dollar is that the central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. So they're planning to use that technology to have complete control. And it's not just our central bank. The White House is also involved. President Joe Biden signed an executive order that said, and I quote, my administration places the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and deployment options of a United States digital dollar. Now, you don't have to believe a single word of what I'm saying. You can read this executive order for yourself. It says it in plain English. A digital dollar would have profound implications for crime, national security, the ability to exercise human rights, financial inclusion and equity, and energy demand and climate change. So the White House is telling us exactly how they're planning to use this digital dollar? They are. So let's say, for example, when it comes to what they call financial equity, if you're a middle-class white person and you're making too much money, they could automatically redistribute some of your wealth to minorities, all in the name of equity. Or here's another situation involving climate change. Since they consider meat to be bad for the environment, they could ban you from buying steaks or any kind of meat. They could freeze your access to your bank accounts because of social media posts criticizing the government. They could also just as easily ban the use of digital dollars to purchase guns or ammunition. The opportunities for them are limitless. And that's why Haskins wrote at The Hill, 
It's clear that the Biden administration and Fed are working together to create a controllable, traceable, programmable digital currency. And if they're successful, life in America might never be the same. And Jim, you believe they will succeed? Like I showed you here today, I believe there's clear evidence Marxists have already taken control of every major institution in America. That means they hold all the power. How could they fail? Unfortunately, there's no one to stop them. At a minimum, I think we should all prepare for the worst. I know you put together a preparation kit called How to Opt Out of American Marxism, and you mentioned there are five steps we need to take to prepare for the end of the republic, right? That's right. This preparation kit involves five steps, so let's cover them right now. The first one is to implement what I call the Digital Dollar Protection Plan. Like I just mentioned, once the digital dollar goes live, the elites will have complete control of how you spend your money. But there's a way for you to opt out of their evil plan. It's a way to basically take your assets off the grid in a way that the government will never be able to freeze them. Are you talking about some sort of offshore account? No, I'm not talking about opening offshore accounts, getting a second passport, or anything super complicated. I've designed this plan for everyday folks, so anyone can implement this. Now, I'm afraid if I reveal all the details here, I could eventually be censored and this page could even get taken down. Trust me, this is the last thing they want you to know because I believe this plan will completely shield you from a digital dollar. So here's what I did. I put all the details of this plan inside a special report called the Complete Digital Dollar Protection Plan. And I'm making it available for free right now to everyone watching this that says yes to this opportunity today. Okay, so just to be clear, everyone watching this will have a chance to get their hands on this report. Absolutely. I will tell you how to claim it in just a moment. But can we first cover the other steps I recommend? Sure, what's the second step? Well, the second step is to use a strategy I call retirement insurance. You see, the current stock market crash has already erased nearly $3 trillion from U.S. retirement accounts. But I think it will get much worse. When all is said and done, the stock market could be down as much as 80%. 80%? And I'm not the only one saying this is just the beginning. The legendary investor Jeremy Grantham agrees with me. This is the guy who correctly predicted the 2000 dot-com crash and the 2008 financial crisis. And he's also expecting an 80% crash? He is. And he's saying he's as certain as he was when he predicted the last two collapses. According to Financial Express, he says, Every historical parallel suggests that the worst is yet to come. If history repeats, this play will once again be a tragedy. And that's why I highly recommend getting what I call retirement insurance. And what exactly is that? This is a little known financial transaction that anyone with a brokerage account can do. And done correctly, it helps protect your stock portfolio because it's a transaction that can make you money when stocks crash. I've never heard of anything like that. Most people haven't. But Wall Street loves this because it can protect them against losses. In fact, check out what the Financial Times wrote recently. Investors are buying record amounts of insurance to protect themselves from a sell-off that has already wiped trillions of dollars off the value of U.S. stocks. Institutional investors have spent $9.6 billion in the past week alone. So when stocks crash, these people who are buying this insurance by making this type of trade actually make money? Correct. I've been sharing this idea with some of my readers, and they've seen a lot of success recently. For example, this past September was the worst September since 2002 with the entire market dropping about 10%. But while stocks were crashing, readers of one of my premium research services had a chance to double their money several times with this retirement insurance secret. For example, when tech company NVIDIA crashed, my readers had a chance to make 130% in less than a month. When clothing company PVH Corp crashed, my readers had a chance to make 134% in just two days. And when Nike crashed, my readers had a chance to make 154% in less than a week. Now listen, these are some of my top performing trades my service saw. Not every trade is a winner, and I never recommend putting in more than you can stand to lose. And all of that this past September? That's fantastic. It really sounds perfect for this kind of crazy market. So how can folks watching this get started? I put all the details of the strategy in another special report called How to Get Started with Retirement Insurance. It walks you step by step how you can implement this strategy in your portfolio. I'll show you how to claim it in just a moment. But first, here's another step I recommend, and that's to buy my number one alternative asset. You're talking about gold? No. I do recommend you have 10% of your assets in physical gold as a hedge against the complete collapse of our currency. 
I personally own one million dollars worth of gold to protect myself and my family from a financial disaster. But I'm not talking about gold. What I'm talking about is a recession-proof investment that has jumped by as much as 40% over the past year. 40%? That's insane. I mean, stocks, bonds, cryptos, everything has crashed, but this is up 40% even with all the chaos that's going on in the world? Yes, and this is also a perfect inflation hedge. No wonder some of the world's richest people and savviest investors on the planet are pouring untold amounts of money into this asset. I'm talking about billionaires like Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates has invested more than $690 million. It's estimated that Jeff Bezos has invested even more, $1.4 billion. But this isn't just for rich people. Anyone can invest in this, which is why I just put together another special report with all the details. It's called My Number One Alternative Asset for 2023. I'll tell you how you can claim this report in just a moment. But first, let me show you another money move I recommend, and that's to buy recession-proof stocks. Jim, are you sure you want to recommend stocks in this environment? These are not just any stocks. You see, most people don't know this, but there are a few companies that are recession-proof. So their stock price can go up even if we have a recession? Exactly. I'm talking about companies like chocolate maker Hershey's. Take a look. While the entire market is tanked, shares of Hershey's are up almost 20% this year. This happens because no matter how bad the economy is, the demand for chocolate and candy remains relatively stable. So these kinds of companies that sell consumer staples tend to outperform in the kind of environment we have now. That's why I also put together another report that will be yours free when you say yes to this opportunity today called My Top Three Recession-Proof Stocks to Buy Now. That's fantastic, and I'm sure everyone watching this will want to grab this report. But what's the last step you recommend? Well, like I showed you today, America is already becoming a country of lawlessness where mobs do whatever they want without any fear of punishment. As we move to the last phase of their plan, I expect even more violence, more crimes, more rioting and looting. That's why I've prepared a special dossier that will help you prepare for the worst. Whether you're concerned about a criminal break-in or a mob of angry protesters, you deserve to feel safe in your home. So I reached out to my colleague and ex-CIA operative, Jason Hansen, and asked him for cutting-edge strategies that will keep your family safe no matter how ugly things get. Oh yeah, I know Jason. So this guy is a former CIA officer. He served nearly a decade in the CIA and even won the CIA's Exceptional Performance Award, not once, but twice. Now he runs a 329-acre facility where he teaches evasive driving, pistol and rifle shooting, intelligence operations, and so much more. So needless to say, he's the real deal. And he helped me put together a special dossier called How to Make Your Home Your Personal Fortress. In this report, you'll discover the simple piece of equipment that turns your front door into an impenetrable barrier. Don't believe you can afford your own panic room? Think again. I'll show you how to build a panic room without spending a fortune. The six steps to survive a crisis. You can't afford to skip step three if you want your survival plan to be a success. And much, much more. Trust me, you'll want to share this information with your loved ones and refer to the report on a regular basis during the final days of our republic to ensure your family remains safe. Jim, that sounds great. So how can folks claim all these reports? You said they're available right now? They are. In fact, I've already made all these dossiers available to a small group of folks who follow my work. You see, we're about to enter the most chaotic environment in the history of America. So it's really not enough to give you all this information and wish you good luck. I'd like to be your guide during these difficult times. That's why I'm inviting everyone watching this to take a risk-free trial to my monthly newsletter called Strategic Intelligence. When you do, I'll send you everything I've mentioned so far at no additional cost. Can you explain how strategic intelligence works? Sure. My mission in this monthly research is simple. To help everyday folks profit from unthinkable events and financial crises, every month you'll get a new issue packed with ideas and strategies that will help you protect and grow your wealth. As the elites continue to implement their evil plan to destroy America, I'll keep you up to date and make sure you know exactly what's going on during this crisis. Before I launched the service, I had only provided this kind of research to my high net worth clients and members of the US intelligence community. But with Rickard's strategic intelligence, you too will have the opportunity to hear my best ideas on an ongoing basis. So when they join strategic intelligence, they'll get immediate access to all the reports you mentioned today? Absolutely, and here's the best part. You can take a look at my research and receive everything I've mentioned so far at no risk to yourself. 
Simply take a risk-free trial subscription to Strategic Intelligence, and I will immediately send you the entire preparation kit called How to Opt Out of American Marxism, which includes all five special reports. Folks, you heard Jim. Once you take this risk-free trial, you'll get access to this entire kit, which includes End of Republic Dossier Number 1, the complete digital dollar protection plan, value of $199, it's yours free. End of Republic Dossier Number 2, how to get started with retirement insurance. End of Republic Dossier Number 3, Jim's number one alternative asset for 2023. End of Republic Dossier Number 4, Jim's top three recession-proof stocks to buy now. End of Republic Dossier Number 5, how to make your home your personal fortress. This one could be worth hundreds of dollars, but again, it's yours free. And here's the good news. Membership to Jim's newsletter normally has a published price of $299 for 12 months. But today, because the elites are about to pull the trigger and execute the last phase of their Marxist plan, Jim negotiated a special deal with his publisher. So today, you could take a risk-free trial for one single payment of $49. And that's not per month. That's just for the entire year, right, Jim? That's right. And we really don't want your money if you're not 100% happy. When you sign up for Strategic Intelligence, we'll give you six months to test out the service at no risk to you. And if during that trial period you find that you're not getting life-changing information, or for any reason at all, you can simply call or email our customer service team and cancel your subscription. We'll give you a full refund, no questions asked. And we'll let you keep everything you receive as a subscriber at no charge. Folks, that means you can keep all the issues, you can keep all the dossiers, you can keep everything. This means there's no risk to you at all. To get started, simply click on the button below. It will take you to a secure sign-up page where you can review everything one last time before you join. Now, Jim, I know you received countless notes from everyday folks telling you how you've helped them protect and grow their finances. Let me read some of these notes for you. Jeffrey Chrisley wrote recently to say, I've been following Jim for years and I've always felt that his analysis was head and shoulders above the rest, clear, concise and authoritative. Keep up the great work. Patrick Neal also contacted to say, I can sleep better at night knowing that when the S hits the fan, I will be making money and not one of the people scrambling to make it day to day. We got another nice note recently from a reader named Ken Franks who writes, there are only a couple of analysts I follow who really understand what's happening and Jim Rickards is at the top of that list. He's the most intelligent and connected person I have access to. I look forward to each issue and find myself in awe of almost every word. Then there was this nice note from Bill Phillips. He said, I have recommended strategic intelligence to my friends and family because it's information everyone should know about. It's worth its weight in gold. Now, Jim, I'm sure you're really proud of the work you've done. Do you have any last words? Yes, I'm glad my work is already helping everyday folks. But I have to admit that I'm really worried that a lot of hardworking Americans are going to be caught off guard in these final days of the Republic. So let me talk to the folks at home. Look, I know everything I said today is hard to hear, but look at the evidence. Just look at how far we've come in just the last two years. Look at how crazy things have gotten in America. We all need to prepare now because history has shown that whenever Marxists take over a country, it ends in disaster. The elites will live like kings in palaces, but everyone else will get crushed and live in poverty. I'm saying this because that's exactly what has happened in 100% of the cases when Marxism was implemented. In Russia, it led to forced labor camps in the gulags, state-organized famines, and an estimated 61 million deaths. In China, under the Mao regime, it led to the worst famine in human history, where an estimated 40 million died of hunger. That's the equivalent of the entire population of California. Back in 2001, Venezuela was the richest country in South America with the largest oil reserve in the world. Then when the Marxists took over, it led to food and medicine shortages, frequent power outages, the world's highest inflation rate at 65,000%, widespread poverty and one of the world's highest murder rates. Things got so bad that people were literally eating rats and stray dogs. Think about that. I can tell you in each one of these countries, millions of people thought that can't happen here. They thought nobody would ever be this evil. The result, they paid the price with their life savings, their God-given rights, and even their lives. Don't make that same mistake. This Marxist plan is unfolding much faster than anyone predicted. 
You can bury your head in the sand and pretend it's not happening, but I showed you all the proof today. And because some Americans are waking up to what's happening, they're getting desperate and they've started to use force. Now they're coming for you. If you don't prepare, you could fall into poverty and lose some of your most fundamental rights. If I'm right about all this, you can either be helpless and put you and your loved ones at risk, or you can take a few simple steps to opt out of this Marxist plan and protect your wealth and your family from the coming chaos. It's your choice. I'm confident you'll make the right decision for you and your family. I look forward to welcoming you to Strategic Intelligence in the next few minutes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your time, Jim. I think we all learned a lot about the real reason America is no longer the country we all grew up in. Folks, if you haven't done so yet, click the button below to get started and discover how you can opt out of this evil Marxist plan. Good night and stay safe.